to run a delve. So I feel like delves are going to be the most frequently done thing, which is why this starting area is so important. So what else is there about the starting area? All right. So quests, uh, how are they generated? And then quest hubs. So I made that tavern, right? Well, I didn't make it. I mean, I got the map, came up with the day, whatever. So we have the tavern. I like the tavern more than I like using the fortress itself because the fortress is going to be controlled by the mage guild, which is the currently going to be the most powerful NPC controlled house slash guild in the setting. Uh, and they're very practical people, so they don't use like the original Aldfair um, name of the fortress. They just call it the outpost because they're like, most people are reading on a third grade level. They're not going to be able to pronounce this elven ruin, so we'll just call it the outpost. Um, so essentially the outpost, there we go, formatting, sweet. All right, what do we know about the control shift eight? Yeah. What do we know about the outpost? Uh, massive elven ruins. Okay. Uh, go deep underground. Uh, magical labyrinth. Uh, home to uh, unlimited number of dungeons and delves. And the cool thing about this is Paradise Vale is a completely homebrew setting. So if you have always wanted to run Wailing Caverns from Worlds of Warcraft and you went and you got the amazing Wailing Caverns adventure that was made, uh, there's a whole bunch of Worlds of Warcraft 5e dungeons that were converted into 5e, and they're amazing. Um, this would be this might be the setting to do this in. Uh, you might want to you might want to do it because honestly, none of this shit has to make any sense uh, as long as it's fun. Uh, we'll find a way to bullshit it uh, and make it work. So, something to consider. All right, so it's a magical labyrinth, uh, home to unlimited number of dungeons uh, and delves. Uh, what else? Controlled by the Mages Guild. Also, again, very practical. They didn't give themselves a fancy name. It's a guild for mages. They call themselves the Mages Guild. Uh, strongest starting NPC faction. I say strongest starting because if players decide that they want to try to take the mage's guild down, they certainly can. Um, there will be other NPC guilds vying for the player characters and their houses, uh, alliances, resources, and assistance. So, and a lot of these NPC guilds ha hate each other. So there's going to be other NPC guilds that will approach your characters and be like, hey, uh, I heard you're going to be doing a quest for the mage's guild. Uh, you know, whatever they're paying you, I'll pay you double if you betray them and you bring us the the rare uh, reagents instead of the mages guild. Or if you swap out the reagents with these poisonous ones that will like cause chaos and disorder or whatever, like we'll give you like money and all that jazz. And you can earn faction with these NPC uh, organizations, which will eventually unlock uh, discounts on equipment, special items, blah, 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 blah. Um, which is pretty cool. Uh, and you can also rank up. So if you played, I don't know, any Elder Scrolls game, you can rank up with the NPC factions. So you could join the Mages Guild as like a neophyte and then uh, rank up as you go, uh, which is pretty cool. And depending on the charter, it could be either be um, conflict of interest or... Um, not like depending if the if a guild has like a non-competitors agreement so they might say if you're in the mages guild uh you can't be in any other guild um you know that, that sort of thing or there could be a group that's like we want you to be in lots of other guilds so that you can spy on them uh that kind of thing anyways so the outpost is massive elven ruins uh do deep um uh goes there we go very deep uh underground Magical Labyrinth, home to unlimited number of dungeons and delves, controlled by the Mages Guild, strongest starting NPC faction, uh, home to the Teleporter, uh, which is how all uh, Valorians arrive in this setting. So they're all traveling here from 
essentially uh, homeland. Uh, everyone is traveling here from the heartlands. All right. So then our other quest hub is currently the shadowed skull. No, the shadow skull saloon. There we go. All right. And the shadow skull saloon is basically a uh, basic bitch tavern and in uh let's see always looking to expand uh owned by the thieves guild and uh oh yeah um central hub of the community uh, place you can stay if you do not have housing or a house or want to avoid camping cool um, there we go and that's really all we have to start with. Uh, we've got the Outpost controlled by the Mages Guild, and we've got the Shadow Skull Saloon controlled by the Thieves Guild. The Thieves Guild and the Mages Guild have a history of working with and against each other. Uh, after 25 years of doing this, they sort of view it as um, a, a positive, right? Like Gary and Ash, red and blue, right? Like the rivalry makes them stronger kind of thing. Um, so... Yeah, and that's that's it. I'll probably go into Incarnate and make uh, like a very small regional map that just shows like these are the ruins. Here's where the mages live. Here's the saloon, and then that'll be it to start. And over time, um, more businesses, uh, guilds, and a stat you know, and buildings and stuff will start to show up. So uh, we'll call this the settlement. Because the settlement doesn't have a name. They just call it the outpost for now. Uh, let's see. The. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, the collected buildings, um, ruins, guild halls, and uh, farmlands that make up the settlement. Hmm. All right. Um, let's see. No name at start. Uh, two ruling bodies. And at the beginning, it's just going to be the Mages Guild and the Thieves Guild are going to be the two ruling bodies. So whatever decisions are made, it's going to be passed by NPCs. Um, so ideally, since it's a player run thing, you're going to want to either be influencing the Mages Guild or the Thieves Guild, or you're going to want to establish a house and argue to have your house added to the ruling bodies that make decisions for the settlement, which would be kind of cool. Um, let's see. Houses, which are also guilds, uh, will be added over time. Uh, there'll be two types, uh, player-generated, and uh, NPC generated. And the NPC ones will uh, be on a timer and they will fill uh, highest current need. So if there's no lumber uh, and nobody can build anything and players aren't going out there and securing um, hexes to gather lumber from, when the DM calendar says it's time to add a new NPC guild, we will probably add a lumber guild, like a lumberjacks guild uh, that is in charge, or a forester's guild, or something like that. Um, so players are going to be smart to pay attention to the needs of the NPCs, uh, because if you decide that your house is going to be in charge of lumber, and lumber is what people are after, 
uh, you're going to become a much more popular house. You're going to have more opportunities. You're going to more, have more NPCs that want to join you because that's the current industry or whatever that people are uh, in need of. So it's going to constantly be shifting, um, which is very interesting. Uh, again, this is all like sandbox and player driven. So there could be some unscrupulous people that want to set uh, the forest on fire because they didn't get a chance to claim that rich hex that was uh, full of lumber and the rival house did. Keep in mind that everybody has to live and work together. So you do these kind of like douchebaggy things uh, and people are going to remember. In the original Paradise Vale, we had a lot of people that got left for dead uh, because they got they had such a bad reputation and they would end up in these life or death situations. And it basically came down to the other people want to risk their roguelike character to save this person's life, knowing that this person is a member of a shitty guild, knowing that this person has screwed people over before, knowing that this person has actively worked against the growth of the settlement, or do we just leave them to die? And it's not the DM's job to enforce like the magic of friendship in a, in a setting like this. It's, it's the player's job to make characters that can diplomatically uh, be strong in addition to being mechanically strong. So it's really fascinating. It's like, it's like this crazy social experiment. We learned so much about just human nature from, <laughs> from the first time we ran Paradise Vale. So very excited to see all that uh, in action. Um, all right, what else is going on with the settlement uh, and the Mages Guild? So the Mages Guild and the uh, Thieves Guild are both going to offer um, banking. So basically, both uh, of these establishments will offer banking options. And that basically means that until you have a place of your own, or even after you have a place of your own, you could stash um, your loot here so that you're not carrying ass loads of gold out into the wilderness to die, um, basically. So assuming that you managed to join a house and you have a will and testament uh, to leave to your next character, uh, as long as your money is in the bank, it'll pass on to your next character. So um, that's where that sort of rogue legacy kind of thing comes in where you know um maybe you fell into lava and you lost all your equipment but that extra suit of armor you had uh you had banked it and it's going to be okay so yeah um let's see what else do we need to cover it's again we're going to start small so this is the quest hub quest hub um the settlement at large, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, let's see. There should probably be a general store. So I think the saloon will function as a general store at first. Functions as a general store. But we'll probably go like Gold Rush style, and the prices will be stupidly high. Okay. And then this will function as... A magic shop, uh, extremely limited supplies, and inflated prices. Okay. Like it is when a server gets started, right? Um, a stack of leather is going to set you back 10 gold or something stupid like that. Um, same kind of thing is going to happen here. Once people have been playing for a while, uh, I'm sure the economy is going to be destroyed somehow. Uh, which is another thing that I'll have to talk to potential DMs about is like the example I had earlier with another DM was Orog. Like an Orog seems like an all right monster, right? It's an underdark orc. Uh, the basic bitch stat block for an Orog has him wearing a suit of plate mail. Well, a suit of plate mail is like a you know a thousand gold, two thousand gold um, market value. So you'd probably want to run your Orogs as just being really muscly and having an 18 armor class because of their dense ass muscles and not because they're walking around with 2000 gold worth of stuff in a setting that we're trying to make gold poor. Um, it's going to be like decisions like that. Like you're welcome to run um, published adventures or pre-written adventures, but you have to be able to on the fly adapt uh so that the, you don't kill the local economy and all that kind of stuff with with uh, your decisions. Uh, again, 
um, magical items uh, long term, that is to say non consumable magical items, but, but quote unquote permanent magical items, are going to be so rare that it's like one per dungeon. Um, the rest of the magic items are all going to be consumable. So they're going to be fun and they're going to be cool and then they're going to be gone uh, to force you to keep going out and adventuring and all that jazz. So, um, hmm. All right. And then down here we've got quests. How are they generated? It's a review. They are either randomly generated, player generated, rumor generated, story and role play generated, planned, uh, or they are a delve. And then, of course, to showcase that, uh, we'll have this map that you'll be able to go to. And this will just be full of billets. And you can pretend you are a white-haired uh, monster hunter and just tear all the billets down and keep them for yourself. Um, no, you can't do that. But, uh, yeah, I like the idea that um, people can come here anytime. You know, 4 a.m., you can't sleep. Uh, you want to see what's going on in Paradise Vale. Uh, you log in. You watch, uh, you watch our little NPCs in the tavern walk around on their AI scripts and pretend that you know you're there. Listen to that tavern music. Close your eyes. Pretend you're not stuck at work at four o'clock in the morning, or uh, you don't have insomnia in the middle of your house. Uh, and then you're like, "Hey, I'm gonna check out the quest board." You go outside, you check out the quest board, and you start planning. You go onto Discord, and you're like, "Hey, I know it's four in the morning, but..." Has anybody thought about the fact that there's like a, I don't know, a T-Rex in the area? That seems kind of dangerous. Anybody crazy enough to help me go hunt down that T-Rex? Because that's a lot of meat and a lot of skin. We can do stuff with the teeth and the bones. Plus, you know, it's, it's a fucking T-Rex in Giphy Glyph system, so it's probably going to be insane. Does anybody want to do that? Uh, and then they have created a player-generated quest based on a rumor that there was a uh, T-Rex spotted in a newly discovered hex. Just like that. DM sees that. This is, man, I'd love to kill a bunch of people with a T-Rex. So they're like, yeah, I'll run that for you. Uh, and now they can go and actually try to find a group, schedule a time, and all that jazz. So very, very, very excited about all this. Um, hopefully this, this stream kind of explains a bit more about the organic nature of a West marches with multiple DMS and uh, procedurally generated content. So hopefully this explains it a little bit better than I have been. I have been getting a lot of PMS on discord. People want me to explain a little bit more about how it works. Um, this is, this is how it's going to work. Um, so, or at least that's how it's worked in the past. So, 